Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Hey Canucks fans, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary, live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am your host, Clay Emo Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take, for Tuesday night, March the 19th. If you're new... Here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for Daily Connects Insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I hope you guys are in a good mood. I'm in a very good mood. I was at the game tonight. I was at the game with my longtime season ticket partner, Mike, who's a teacher, so he's enjoying a spring break. And we had a wonderful catch-up session at the Vancouver Canucks game, a game that the Canucks won 3-2 to two quite easily. And I, I think the score makes it look like the game was a lot closer than it was. Because as we talk about the stats, as we talk about what I noticed at the game, I want to hear about what you noticed at the game. I think it, um, yeah, I do think the score flattered the Sabres just a little bit. But a win is a win. And it's nice that the Canucks get back into uh, into the, the win column with their 3-2 victory tonight. So tonight, I, I'm going to talk for the first 20 minutes. Then I'm going to give you the second 20 minutes. And because it's Tuesday night, I have to be done by 11.45 because I have my regular church hour, my holy hour that starts at midnight. But we have people from all around the world, even even from Los Cabos, Mexico. That's where Los Cabos is, right, BC Beastly? Thank you for being here, and thanks to everyone. I know there's a lot of people that were um, that are tuning in from other uh, – from from all over the place from all over the place. So thank you. The fr great win MVP tonight was the fry guy at triple O's. So Justin, is that you or is that a story about the, you know, someone posting from the last game that they spent eight bucks on a carton of fries that only had 15 fries in it, but let's get going. I can recognize Justin's donation. Justin, explain to me what you're talking about. And then we'll do our regular show opening. So let's give some love to Hall of Fame member Just Incredible in the chat. So yes, a $2 do donation from Justin gets us going, gets the donation train out of the station and says, great win MVP tonight, the fry guy at Triple O's. So Justin, give me some uh, context. Is that you because you were at Triple O's or is that a reference to that, that cheeky tweet that we saw from Saturday night where someone paid eight bucks and they got 15 fries, or maybe I'm completely um, out of the loop even more than that, and that would not surprise me. So this is how you can get involved tonight. You can get involved in the show. Moderators, do what you need to do to keep this a safe and respectful place. Members, as legends, Hall of Fame franchise members, thanks for your support as always, and to everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Steveston and Richmond, in the city, lower mainland province, country, continent, around the world, Thank you for being here. You know that I know that you could be watching anyone else, doing anything else, getting ready for work, school, or better, all three. But the fact that you are here with me, know how much I always appreciate you, and I never, ever take you for granted. Whether you live here and you're vacationing, whether you're overseas like Anula, I know that Anula's here, whether you're, you're different parts of the lower mainland, whatever it may be, you guys are amazing. That's why we are the best community here on YouTube. So this is how you can get involved. You can subscribe. To the channel so you get active in the chat section get notified of my videos every single day you can like the video there are 60 of you in here which is great a great start to this game night not game night vlog like a live stream but a connects game night there are 60 of you in here you guys know what i'm going to say next hit the like button so we can get to at least 30. you guys know how much i like the 50 percent rule like the fact that the connects won like the fact that i'm here still looking good in my haircut like the fact that i got my shirley temple like the fact that pd was a beast like the fact that Miller and Garland were beasts as well. Our power play was a beast. So much beast in honor of BC Beastly. So glad that you guys are all here. <laughs> Justin says, yes, we had to. This is amazing. We had to completely overload the fries tonight. I was at the scene of the crime tonight at 3.07. Damage control as per supervisors arena wide. 
top up fries, ensure good customer experience and even top up drinks. Wow. Thank you for taking us um, a peek behind the curtain, Justin. So again, subscribe, like the video. You can leave a donation like Justin has done. He got the donation train out of the station. Thank you, brother. You can gift a membership. You can buy your own membership. You can upgrade your own membership. You can use your monthly membership message, the triple M monthly membership message. Everyone, every member gets one. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, you can rate and review. So remember, I get the first half of the show up until the 1120 mark, and I'm giving you the second half of the show. So let's get to it. I was at this game. By the way, I am so happy because I got to meet Darun and his beautiful bride. They got married yesterday, and they're at the game today. So is Darun, is he in the chat right now? I thought I saw his name in the chat earlier. So I got to meet Darun and his new wife, Tara. Is it Tara or Tara? I, thought it, I think he said Tara, right? It was awesome to see you guys during the second intermission. I saw my wonderful uh, friend, Paula. I'm not sure she's watching right now. Paula, who actually bought seats for me today. And um, she she was there with her mom, Yolanda. I meant to go see Raymond, who actually won tickets for this game. So Raymond, I'm not sure if you're in the chat tonight. I hope you had a great time. And then I saw Daniel, who I know more from Instagram. I saw some other people. And then I finally got to meet Samantha Chang. Believe it or not, we've done podcasts together. We've done video shows together. Uh, we trade messages almost on a, on a weekly basis, if not daily, when we were doing Game Over. And I've known her for five years, but I only met her today. And I can show you that picture a bit later. No, I don't have to show you. You guys can just look it up if you want to see it. But I got to meet Sam, and it was wonderful to meet Sam in person. You know what else is wonderful? When the legend herself comes through doing legendary things. So let's give some love to Carol Bovalander, always so generous, always so awesome. And today she comes through with, with, um, with another massive donation. She gifts 10 memberships, which is the equivalent of $50 donation. So let's give Carol some love in the chat. Carol and I were able to chat last night. We chatted for 15, 20 minutes at 1230 in the morning. That's what I do for legends. Well, that's what I'll do for any of you. But uh, yesterday we had a specific purpose to speak. But yes, Carol, let's give Carol some much deserved love in the chat. She does it not because she wants to show off, not because she's made of money. She does it because she loves this community. She loves what not what I'm doing, what we are doing in this community and how we uplift her. And this is how one way she shows her appreciation. So welcome, Casey, Irwin, Sarah, Adam, Ian, J-Dub, Duffman, Ken, Jay, and Stro Show. I think most of you have been members before. Welcome back to CCC membership. Appreciate you guys. And I certainly appreciate Carol with that amazing donation. So please, let's give some love to Carol in the chat. Irvin, Irvin asks, was Sam Chang wearing a Michigan jersey? Well, why don't I show you what Sam Chang was wearing? Kapow! Yes, I said, it was great to finally meet Samantha in person. It only took five years. So there she has her Michigan jersey. There's my Quinn Hughes. I, I remember it was a black skate jersey. So there's my Quinn Hughes jersey. And then, yeah, it was, it's pretty awesome to finally meet Sam. She's bright. She's uh, beautiful on the inside and out, very smart, uh, knows her stuff. And it was wonderful to have a chance to meet her as well as to meet, like I said, many other people tonight at the game. All right, let's talk about this game. Let's talk about this game. We won't go too much into all of the, of the goals because you guys have told me that um, you... You don't need me to go through the goals in great detail, but we had Garland with a jam play at the start, just four minutes in another quick start for the Canucks from Hughes and Pedersen. So that revamp line of Pedersen, Hoglander and Garland gets the Canucks going. Then the power play goal by PD, a really nice backhand effort as he was getting checked. That makes it two nothing. Then Rasmus, speaking of nice efforts, Darlene goes through our entire team. Didn't like, I know it was the end of a shift. Didn't really like Lindholm and Hronik's effort on that goal by Rasmus Dahlin. 
makes it 2-1, makes it a little interesting. By the way, the Canucks completely dominated the first two periods. Buffalo started to come on in the third, but I was never worried that the Canucks were going to lose this game. Then they pulled a goalie with two and a half minutes left, kind of early. But this is what happens when you pull early. You get scored on and you can still score and you still lose by one. So Petey, showing some great patience, his second of the game, 33rd of the season from Miller. Awesome to see Miller and Petey connect. So Petey makes it 3-1. We think everything's fine. And then Darlene scores with 22 seconds left. It goes off of Zadorov's right leg, pass to Smith. So again, it makes it look the game a little closer than it was, but it was 3-1 to the final and yes the canucks but uh, actually let me let me talk about some individual performances and then i'll talk about what i saw from the canucks as a whole then i want then i want to hear what you um what you guys thought about the game so yeah look at the shots we dominated them after two periods the shots were 25 to 10 it was a it was a smoke show so 25 to 10, the Canucks were winning in the shot battle. They scored in the first and second period. Then even in the third, as Buffalo was pressing, the Canucks outshot uh, the Buffalo Sabres 9 to 7. So 34 to 17, doubling. Again, uh, it's it can't be understated. No, it can't be overstated. Um, it can't be emphasized enough how important face-off wins are. And since Lindholm has got to the team, I rarely see the Canucks lose in the face-off battle and 59 to 41 and every face-off one means you don't lose. Well, no, no kidding, Einstein, but uh, that's going to be important when it gets to the playoffs. Our power play finally connected one for five, not the best, but even though they only scored once, they look very dangerous. They looked, they're moving the puck finally side to side, up, down. Rick Tockett made a point that the Buffalo Sabres do not do a traditional diamond. When a, a diamond penalty kill, it makes it hard for, PD and Miller to get shots off because if you think about a diamond, that's where the, the two outsides of the diamonds Buffalo does more of a one, one, two. So more of an eye. So then there are more looks from the side and you saw the Canucks really try to capitalize on that kill off all four Buffalo penalties, more hits, more block shots, more giveaways, but more takeaways as well. So the Canucks have beat Buffalo in the season series, two games to zero. Didn't really notice Owen Power. He took a penalty. Didn't really actually notice Bo Did even Byron play? Because I, I I rarely recognize. Let, let's look at Boston real quick. So Byron did play 24 minutes. How come I, I barely noticed him? Power and then Darlene was was really good. And then even Tage Thompson wasn't that noticeable. Although he didn't have a he had a decent stat line. You know why Olafson was was noticeable? Because Quinn Hughes smoked him. He smoked him in the first period as Olafson was coming across the blue line. PD goes back to his bench with a huge grin on his face. So that was really, really nice to see. Let's see what the Canucks did. Well, of course, Garland had his, his goal. Miller had two. PD in on all three goals, two and one. And then you just kind of look, Miller, what a beast. Two points, six shots, one hit. That's pretty good. Garland had four shots, I noticed. Lafferty, decent game playing on that third line. That third line was, was noticeable. They, they didn't do anything silly. And um, I thought they had their moments. Lafferty had two shots and four hits. Lindholm had no shots and only two hits. And then McKayev had one shot. So, okay, maybe only Lafferty was, was effective on that line. But I actually, I noticed Lindholm from a defensive standpoint, even though this doesn't look great, a minus two. But, yeah, I, I actually, I just finished saying I didn't like his effort on the first Dalingo. The second one was a mad scramble with a, with a guy with an extra player. Wasn't too worried about that. Pod Colson and Oman, uh, Oman only at 738, Pod Colson only at 630. Uh, it's not like they've played poorly. In fact, they had a, a they had a shift or two in the, in the third period, but it was because, because there are a lot of special teams, a lot of power play, a lot of penalty kill, and Pod Colson and Oman are part not part of any of the special teams. On the blue line, you had Hughes with the two assists, and then just looking what's Stands out to me. You notice when Juleson's not in the lineup, there aren't like major hits, but uh, I think Myers had that big one where it knocked off that guy's helmet. And then three shots on goal for Hughes, 23 minutes of ice time. But I, I don't mind this. I, I was, I've said on my vlogs before, usually you'll see Hronik and Hughes get between 22 and 24. And if the other four guys get anywhere between 16 and 19 minutes a game, that makes a lot of sense. DeSmith wasn't overly busy. Can't blame him on the on either goal. The, the Rasmus Darlene goal was pretty sweet. The first one and the second one was off of Zadorov. So overall, oh, I saw Rosie at the game too. Saw Rosie at the game as well. Yes, Ricky, uh, Rosie mentioned that you were there and that you said hello. 
So what's really interesting is uh, two things. Well, many things, but two things that I noticed based on what Rick Tockett talked about in his, in his interview yesterday, which was a non game day. He said two things that a, the Canucks were not getting to the middle of the ice and B that they had way too many block shots or they missed the net too much. And I noticed that the Canucks really tried to rectify that. Now I, I get it. Buffalo is not the best team in the world. In fact, Buffalo, I thought should have showed more urgency considering how, how precarious their playoff predicament is. There's a bunch of P's there, how precarious their playoff predic predicament is, but uh, it's not just the Buffalo Sabres not maybe playing as urgent as they need to, but the Canucks had a lot to do with that too. I think the Canucks played a really strong game, especially in the first two periods. So the two things talk talked about yesterday, get to the middle of the ice. The Canucks did that for sure. In fact, you could tell like um, on all their goals and especially in the first two periods, they were really crashing the crease. In fact, my friend Mike told me that uh, not only are the Canucks crashing the crease and it's, it's leading to scoring opportunities and goals like Garland's, but they might take a goalie interference penalty too, the amount of times they were in Devin Levi's face. So I like that the Canucks were getting to the middle of the ice like Rick Tockett challenged them to do. The other thing that I noticed is, yeah, they didn't miss as many shots, have as many shots blocked. They didn't, um, well, actually 14 is quite a bit, but they didn't shoot as wide or as high as many times as I remember uh, as they have been in the past games. But I also noticed that a few times they shot right into Devin Levi's chest. I remember Carson Soucy from, from the slot. He did that once. I think a couple other players did. And Mike and I were talking about maybe it was getting into the Canucks heads a little bit. They didn't want to get their shot blocked, nor they didn't want it to go whistling wide or high. So they weren't trying to pick corners as much. They were just trying to get it on net and create rebounds. The best way to do that is to shoot low, of course, into a goalie's pads where you can't cover it. So there are a couple of shots where I thought could have been better, could have been better scoring chances, but maybe the Canucks were going for the safer play. And maybe in their head, they had the idea that, um, yeah, maybe they had the idea that they're, they didn't want to shoot wide as much. What are you guys talking about? What happened on the TV? Did, did, was there a blackout? Oh, interesting. Nuts were 10 for 12 fries in the third one ketchup package. <laughs> yeah, one ketchup. Um, the, the mustard didn't get off the bench. Yeah, good. <laughs> I see a lot of fries comments for sure. <laughs> All right, let me go through what this means in the standings and then Mitch Rose wants to read, then turn it over to you. These Tuesday night streams go really quickly because I do have to finish by 1145. Can you hear me gulp, by the way? I, I'm not a big ASMR guy, but AMSR, ASMR, AMRS, AMSR. Whatever those four letters are, but let's see if you can hear me gulp. Oh, I almost threw up there. That's not what you want to hear. A lot of games tonight, 13. So that means only six teams were not in action. And the Bruins continuing their winning ways. Detroit trying to get back into the thick of things. Devils up and down. Pittsburgh's ASMR. Thank you. <laughs> Did I say AMSR? No gulp, please. I should start an ASMR channel. Sarah, you think you sweat now? Just imagine if I started to put some sound effects on the internet. Wait, that didn't sound right. But thank you, Sarah, for your support. <laughs> we have the Jets beating the Rangers in a battle of top five teams. Was this the Flyers without Sean Couture beating the Maple Leafs? We had Carolina. They've been great since the trade deadline. Islanders, that's a dent in the... Remember the East, there's quite a race between five teams for two playoff spots there. Nashville, Nashville's crazy. Nashville's crazy right now. 10 hours of clay gulping said no one ever. That didn't sound right either. Avalanche win. Oilers win. They win. They beat Montreal. That's the one team that I kind of don't want to win. We had the Wild keeping their playoff hopes alive. We had the Kings beating the Blackhawks, whereas Vegas loses to Tampa. Tampa in that wild card. Vegas trying to stay in that wild card. And we had our team uh, beat the Buffalo Sabres. So, so you put it all together, and this is how it looks. In the Pacific Division, we are eight points up on Edmonton. 
they have three games in hand. So they win all three there. They come, sneak up right behind us, two points behind us. Then you see Vegas uh, falling, uh, sorry, LA taking a two point lead over Vegas for the battle of that third spot. It's interesting though. You come in third, you play Edmonton or Vancouver, probably Edmonton uh, as the standings are. You come in fourth, you might have to play in the central division. So we go to the wild card, and then in the east, it's still Philly with their win. They stay up. So this is a good battle. Tampa is going to be safe. They're fourth in the Atlantic. But this is a nice battle here. You got Detroit with 76 points. Washington with 75, but they played two fewer games. And you still have the Islanders and Buffalo. That was not um, a good result for them. But yeah, it's still a nice little race in the east. In the west, we've known this many. Nashville. They are 8-0-2 still. They're amazing. And then they're pulling away, actually, from Vegas and L.A., who are going to battle for the second wild card spot. Minnesota and St. Louis with an outside chance. And then everyone from Calgary down is too far down, uh, down the line. Finally, in the entire league, in terms of points, the Canucks are in a three-way tie for second with 94 points. Um, and then in terms of points percentage, they're still fifth. Well, tied for fourth with the Rangers. So the Canucks are still by points and points percentage, a top five team in the league, despite the two losses they just had. Remember, they won four right before that. So they were six, two, and two in their last 10. So that doesn't sound that bad at all. But all the teams in the top five have won seven of their past 10. Seven, 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 six, six. And then look at Colorado, nine, Carolina, eight. Carolina is sneaking up real quick. They're only two points behind the Canucks. Um, Dallas, Edmonton, Toronto. Make up your top 10 right now. All right. We'll stop that. I will end the poll where I asked who was the Canucks MVP tonight? Who is their best player? 61% of you saying Elias Pettersson, 60%. I should say Garland at 20%. Hughes with 14%. Miller with only 3%. By the way, a, a scare. Miller took a shot, blocked a shot from Tage Thompson. I believe Miller said after the game that it was his ankle, but that he is just that he is feeling fine. Thank goodness, because obviously we need a healthy JT Miller for sure. So let's do my mid-show sponsor read, and then I'll have time to answer some of your questions. But don't type them in just yet, otherwise I won't get to them. Shout out to my primary sponsor, Van City Experts Real Estate. Contact Jason Limina's team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my secondary sponsor, Perform Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Check them out at ptform.com. Thank you to Gassy Jai Art, maker that 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 fine. Thank you to Gassy Jai Art, maker that fine artwork. And thank you to Vessi Footwear. Use the link tinyurl.com slash Vessi Clay and receive a free pair of socks of your next purchase of Vessi shoes. Some shows this week, tomorrow and Thursday, both at 11 p.m. Tomorrow, I'll bring on Coach Rob, Hall of Fame member whose uh, birthday it is no franchise member whose birthday I, I always forget what Coach Rob is franchise member, but I'm going to bring him on because usually I bring in all of the, of the legends and the hall of fame, but Coach Rob has been around uh, so much and it's been such a great support of the channel. So I'm going to bring on Coach Rob for a few minutes as part of tomorrow night stream. Then Thursday night will be a post game stream. I have one more game to sell. I now somehow I increase what I have to sell. So I have a pair of uppers and a pair of lowers for Montreal's game, and then that's it. Then I'm done for the season. So if you're interested, send me an email, connectclay at gmail.com. All right, let's get to the second half of the show as soon as I remind you how you can get involved. You can subscribe, like the video, leave a donation, like Justin, gift memberships like Carol, buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership, use your own Triple M monthly membership message, and for listening on a podcast platform, rate and review. Let's start with this. Remember last time I was here, I told you my wife was pregnant. She had premature baby, 34 weeks. Can't wait to bring him home. Okay, King Kino, thank you for that. I, I'm judging from your message that baby and, and mom are healthy. I hope you are as well. So I, I, I sure hope so. And thank you for the update. And we will all, um, you know, send our, our good wishes and prayers that, yeah, that you have a healthy baby. But congratulations. And, and then I hope everything's okay, Kinkino. Thank you for that.
Thank you for sharing that for sure. For sure. Okay, we're going to do questions only because there are more than 75 of you in here. I think that's the fairest way, um, just so I don't fall too far behind. Here we go. What's more likely to happen, in my opinion? Canucks finish first in the West and Nashville falls to wildcard two. LA Kings are wildcard one and Vegas catches P3. Or Canucks finish second in Western Conference, Vegas stays West wildcard two, we play wildcard one. I think your second scenario... Uh, Canucks finish first in the West. Yeah, I, I just think when, when all said and done, one of Winnipeg or Colorado or Dallas are going to finish ahead of the Canucks. I just have that sense. So I would take your second scenario. But as I've said many times on this channel, I don't worry about the scenarios because it's too hard to predict. Are the Canucks going to finish first or second in the division? Are they going to finish first or second in the conference? And then who finished wildcard one, wildcard two? I think it's great to, to project, to think, to, to hope, to pray. But we won't know until the last week. Of the season was the crowd in the arena as concerned as viewers were when Miller I don't know Fangirl I didn't talk to the rest of the crowd I don't think a lot of people notice quite frankly uh, no I shouldn't say that I didn't notice I, I actually I didn't even notice that he wasn't on a bench or taking a regular shift I saw a tweet actually that I looked at during the commercial break but I definitely noticed when he came back on to start the second period for that power play then was gone for a bit then came back so um I think there would be more concern if he was absent for longer I will say this about the fans tonight um it seemed, I don't know what it looked like on TV. It seemed a little bit quieter. I, I, there were certainly some empty seats in the arena tonight. And I know Buffalo isn't the biggest draw. So maybe all that had to do with it. Although Larshiders did their best to keep the arena happen. Yes, Jaden, nice to meet you and Daniel. Thanks for saying hi. And it was nice to take that picture. I think we took about eight pictures because we weren't sure if your friend, uh, Daniel, or no, Daniel wasn't happy with his smile. <laughs> now that Garland has had a look in the top six, what do you think of his potential as a top six player? I think he's a borderline top six player, Darren. We're playing paying him like a top six player at 4.9. So on this team, I like him more than Suter, more than Mikheyev up there. So he's the fourth highest paid winger. Sorry, fourth highest paid forward. So if you go by that, and it's not the best way of looking at it, he should be in the top six. Yeah, I thought he was great. That line doesn't have a lot of size to it, but they played hard. Garland PD and Hoglander. He's small and grateful. She's sore. All right, Kinkino, you're going to make it through. And I agree. Uh, nothing better than being a parent. Hey, Simon, I got your email. I'll respond to it. Don't worry. I just want to ask you who you think would be a good matchup for the playoff positions. Uh, Vegas is going to be tricky. Nashville is playing so hot right now. So maybe I want the Kings if I had to pick. Yes, Chris Simon passed away. And you know, Zal, you know what was interesting about this? Is all the news outlets said they passed away suddenly, da-da-da. But it was Corey Hirsch on Instagram that actually said it, it was suicide. And then Corey Hirsch, obviously, um, with all his work with mental health, I have no reason not to believe him. But he was also the only person who said it. I'm just looking right now to see if it's still up on his thing. Yeah, uh, Corey Hurst said, crushed to hear a friend of mine and a terrific competitor took his own life. You deserved a better ending. Stop suicide. That's what he hashtagged it. So it's very, very sad. Very, very sad. Someone add, answer this for Daz Money. What is required to pick up tickets at Will Call other than matching ID? Good question. Oh, so that's why you have hard copy tickets because your dad doesn't have a smartphone. That makes sense. Doug says, please explain the LTIR fiasco everyone is upset about. So uh, very quickly, the Vegas Golden Knights by pure salaries have more than the salary allowed salary cap. Because in the playoffs, there is no salary cap. But you have to be salary cap compliance all the way into the last day of the regular season. So, for instance, Mark Stone is out with a ruptured spleen. I don't think they're lying about that. Um, I, I'm sure they'd much rather have Mark Stone in, the, in their lineup right now. It's considering they're battling for their playoff lives. But basically, what teams like Vegas can do, and they've done, 
Tampa did it with Kucherov. The Canucks even did it way back in 2011. I think Chicago did it with Patrick Kane. If you have a player on LTIR, and I've explained the rules many times here, have to miss a minimum of 10 games in 24 days. If you have a player on LTIR, you get that roster spot and you get that player's salary doesn't count against the, the salary cap. So let's say, for instance, that Mark Stone makes $8 million. I don't know what he makes, but let's just say he makes $8 million. Technically, the Vegas Golden Knights could trade for a player that makes $8 million, And then when the playoffs start, remember there's no salary cap. If Mark Stone's healthy and they use that player that they traded for that makes $8 million, technically the Vegas Golden Knights could be $8 million over the salary cap. So they're, all their total salaries could be $90 million instead of eighty two. So that is the fiasco that people complain about. They are not breaking any rules. They are exploiting a loophole that's in the rules that other teams have done as well. Lars Scheiders, they started before COVID, Irvin. So I know we lost a season and a half, but they've been around for about five or six years. And I, I'm not sure if they do playoff games. I, I think they must. They must. A lot of you sharing uh, your birth stories, which is good. Thoughts on target saying Joshua is progressing. You think they're afraid to rush him back? Yeah, I think what they're looking at right now is they're in a comfortable position. Instead of rushing them back and 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 potentially hurting him again, they just want to make sure that he is good to go. Now, of course, we all want him back as soon as possible for the team. But, um, but yeah, uh, um, I, I think they're taking a cautious approach. I know there's some conspiracy theories why the Canucks so bad at reporting injuries, but that's what they're going to do. And, um, yeah, just look forward to him making our team that much stronger, but they do want to make sure that he is, he is better. Yes. Got to see Helen at, at the second intermission as well. Nice catch up with Helen. What's your second boy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you guys teaching each other about Chris Simon. That's good. Tough guy. Yes, uh, the former KHL player also suicide. Eli, missed your brother. It's been a while. Let's go for a classic Eli question. Over three quarters through the season, let's hear some team awards. Most underrated player, Dakota Joshua. Best defensive forward. Huh. Do I give that to Petey? Because it's not, uh, Lindholm, I don't think he's been here long. Biggest up and coming player, Niels Hoglander. How's that, Eli? What? Today's your 60th birthday? Well, Ken, that deserves not a birthday horn, but a goal horn. So glad that Carol gifted you a membership on your 60th birthday. That means you're exactly 10 years older than I am. See that good math? Because I'm turning 50, you turn 60. Gosh, I'm so smart. So happy birthday, Ken. Thanks for being here on your birthday. Tell us how you celebrated. Thoughts on the new rule where players can't hang on the side of the bench in between shift changes and apparently refs keep getting cut by skates. Yeah, so I don't know if refs keep getting cut by skate. I know a, a linesman recently did and that's what was the impetus for this rick target agrees with it and yes a bunch of minor rule changes that will be proposed to actually no this one came in a, my my apologies this one came in effect today and there's been a, a bunch of other ones that are going to get proposed to the competition committee but you're right fangirl um I, I think it's a good rule like um you don't need especially like there's the danger of getting cut by a skate when you're skating by there's also just uh, a puck hitting a, an arm or a leg injuring that player and or stopping play unnecessarily. Edmund, I do believe it's a broken hand. Yes. Vegas has $104 million in salary. Oh, that, that's awesome. That's very safe. I mean, that's very fair. <laughs> yes, Rosie, I mentioned that. Great seeing you tonight as well. Miller's limping. That's not good. Yeah, Eli, I won't have time to go through all the proposed rule changes, but they're all minor they're all minor, but ways to just kind of get more accurate. As long as it doesn't slow down the game, that's always the the check and balance, right? Is, is or the give and take is if the rules make the game more the officiating more accurate, so less chance of complaining or less losing to a blown icing call or offside call or a goalie interference. I'm all for it, but the the check the trick is it can't go for so long. 
Um, but I, I'm okay with them. But Eli, maybe I'll go through them tomorrow when they have more time on the stream. Yeah, Doug, I, I've noticed that Hronik hasn't been the best defensively all season. So I, I don't know how you factor that into a new contract. If the five, if the core five Canucks had walk-up music, what WWE songs would they use? Um, Miller's got a lot of attitude, so I could see him using the rock. I could see Demko doing some. Does Demko like country music? I don't know. Um, let's just use uh, Kevin Owens. Dun, 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 dun. That would be good for someone like. Uh, I guess that would be Miller as well. Let's give PD Stone Cold's music. Let's give. Uh, <laughs> Let's give uh, what other music do I like? Cody Rhodes. I guess that's Quinn Hughes, right? Royal family. So we'll go Quinn Hughes and then uh, oh Jay Uso. Um, let's give that to Petey. I can see Petey come out to Jay, it's just me Uso. That's kind of cool. And Brock will just come out to some uh Ric Flair's music. How's that? If the Flyers make the playoffs this year, will they be the biggest team to accidentally make the playoffs when they were planning on tanking? Yeah. Uh, it would be a shame if they miss the playoff. They just miss and they kind of wasted the season that way. Nice to see you on paved. Thoughts on the NHL not changing or adding OT rules? Yep, I'm fine with it. Um, I, I saw a stat that said most of the games are ending in OT, not the shootout. So they see if you're worried about teams regrouping or skating back to their own end, then you got to find a way to make them not do it. Just win control of the puck. Any cause for concern with the Canucks not being able to put away teams, even though dominating on the stat sheet. Yeah. Des money. You take away that, that late goal that went off the door. of shin. And then it's a three, one game. Uh, no, not a big cause for concern. Remember the other team is playing very hard as well, playing for their playoff lives. You know what? Gurkham, I did not like the new line combos on paper, but with Miller and Besser together, they're fine. I thought the PD line was really good. I thought Linome, Lafferty, and McKay have had their moments, and Pacoz and Oman barely played. So I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Would I have been okay with seven minute OT three and three to get rid of the shootout together? I would have been. Yeah, I, I would prefer that over the shootout. But fangirl, I don't I think that extra two minutes adds a lot of wear and tear to the players. And I'm not sure if the NHLPA would go for it. Good question. You think Couturier will ask out after being healthy? I know he wasn't very happy. And I, we saw this when Torts sat Luongo out of the Heritage Classic. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, it just, it's just such a risky move. And then are they going to do it again because they won? That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. Carol does not like the shootout. If I had the if I had to pick the Canucks victory song, what would I pick? Uh, you Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. I just, I just really like that song. I don't know. Canucks victory song or young MC bust a move. You can, you can see my, uh, my favorite genre of music. Brock Besser's Kurt Angle's music. I like that Irvin. I like that. PD or Hoglander. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. That's good too. You guys are good. You guys are good. Besser's music will be HBK sexy boy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know who's getting the world cup of hockey again. Did they announce the cities? Good question, Simon. I don't know. Clifford misses the ties. Interesting. Yeah, there, sorry. I missed. There is a World Cup of Hockey. So isn't it um, they're going to do one next year in 2025 and then going to the Olympics in 2026? Does that sound right? I think that's right. Carol. Legendary Carol Bovelander. Let's give some love to Carol in the chat. Woo! Carol, I'll get with the $5 donation. Thank you, Clay, for the conversation last night. Really appreciate you. I really appreciate you and the community. I won't be here if it wasn't for you. Well, thank you, Carol. We, we love you. We appreciate you as well. And um, we appreciate your generosity. But more importantly, we appreciate who you are. So thank you for being here. And I'm glad that this community means a lot to you. Yeah, I think it means a lot to a lot of people in here. If I had to pick a new sponsor for the Canucks Arena, what would it be? Oh, Eli, do you even have to ask? Right here. 
right here. And I would be asked to be the spokesperson. Personalized goal songs, uh, fangirl. What's tricky about this is so many times a goal gets changed, uh, an official scoring change, or uh, the guy in the sound booth didn't see that it went off of a, a player. So um, oftentimes they they would play the wrong song. And it's no one's fault. So no, I, I'm not a fan of the personalized goal songs. Four nations next year. That's right. Canada, US, Finland, Sweden. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Lyndon. Then Olympics. Huh? No, Olympics can't be two years apart. 2010, 14, 18, 20. There's 26, right? Not 28. Don't you mean? I don't know what's in 28. That doesn't look right. Hey, Adrian. Yeah, McKayev was good. Tyler Myers' music is Mick Foley's. <laughs> the car crash. Very good, Zal. That is, that is very good. That is very good. Aren't the Canucks already sponsored by Pepsi? Yeah, they're, or there's some sort of agreement because it's all Pepsi products. That's true. Could Oilers Panthers be a final? It could be. I don't want it to be. Roger Arena gives the free non alcoholic beer to designated drivers. Yes. So before my current hookup, that's what I used to do is I was always fill out that thing and you get a free drink, a free pop. But now I think it's, isn't it Bud Zero that they're giving out? Non alcoholic beer? Jason Lim just took a bullet. Wait, because, oh, Oh, you, I was supposed to name Van City Experts. Yes, Van City Experts should be the 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 sponsor of Rogers Arena. Don't tell me I said that. <laughs> Take care, Nula. If you had to redesign the playoff tile this year, what would you do? Uh, put two holes in it for your eye. I, I don't know. Like What what can you do with a tile, Daniel? Okay, friends. It's 1143. It means I do have to go right now okay on to this last one would you want to finish second in the western conference if it means not having to play vegas in round one would be a very interesting matchup if vegas... yeah can you imagine colorado winning and then vegas is called uh, as as uh as wild card two yeah let them let them beat each other up and we'll end with this zadora with brock lesnar's theme sounds good to me friends you guys are awesome sponsors no moderators thank you for keeping this a safe and respectful place i saw that you had to take care of a couple things so thank you for doing that you guys are very good members legendary lucas gates legendary carol bovalander legendary andrew chang thank you for your support as always and thanks to hall of fame and franchise members as well and thanks to all of you for watching for liking and subscribing for those of you who went above and beyond justin with the donation carol with the donation and carol with the 10 gift memberships amazing as always thank you guys and uh, my sponsor is Van City Express Real Estate, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. Thanks to all of you as well. Don't forget tomorrow night, 11 o'clock, my regular live stream. And then I usually save my birthday calls for Hall of Fame and Legends, but I'm going to bring on Coach Rob tomorrow for a few minutes because he's been a longtime supporter of this channel. And it was great to see so many of you once again at the game tonight. It was great to see the Canucks win 3-2. to two. Next game is on Thursday against the lovable montreal canadians on your way out subscribe like the video leave a donation gift a membership buy your own membership upgrade your membership use your mmm or rate and review if you're listening on a podcast and i can't wait to see all of you 11 hours no 23 hours from now not 11 hours i'm not streaming at, at 12 noon uh 23 hours from now at 11 p.m for my next show until then stay safe and then, oh by the way if you're just got here and you're wondering why i'm rushing off Every Tuesday, I have to be sitting in my church for my prayer hour at midnight. So now for real, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. By the way, did you know that before I started my job working for the Catholic Archdiocese, I went for a job interview at Ikea. And when I walked in, the manager greeted me by saying, come in, make a seat. God bless. And go Canucks go. Booyah.